What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm posing the question, should you buy the 2020 Megatons? The Megatons are right around the corner and ever since Konami re-engineered the way that these Megatons are structured, they've become one of my favorite products because there really is something for everyone in this set. We'll talk about that a little bit more in depth in terms of the pros and cons. So to kick things off with the Megatons, let's go ahead and give you guys a breakdown of the anatomy of what these tins look like. Now, before we get into the video, if you plan on buying any sort of single cards or Megatons as a result, of watching this video, be sure to use my TCG player affiliate link down in the description. It doesn't cost you anything and it directly supports the channel. So the Megatons are comprised of reprints of cards from some of the last few sets. So those sets include Savage Strike, Dark Neo Storm, Rising Rampage, Chaos Impact, and also the Infinity Chasers. This is a new thing that they've started doing by taking one of the side sets of the year and including those cards into the product. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on. As for the contents of the tin, each tin can contains three mega packs, and these packs contain one prismatic secret rare, two ultra rares, two super rares, one rare, and I believe about 12 commons. Now, we're going to kind of ignore the commons and the rares for the time being, because the sole focus of this is going to be on the super ultra and secret rare reprints, because I think that's what people are most looking forward to. Now, I want to start by giving you guys a pack breakdown to show you the ratio of what the likelihood is of getting a specific card out of these tins. So, for the secret rares, there are 27 secret rares in the tins that you can possibly get, and since you get one secret per pack, and there's three packs, that means you have about a one in nine tin chance of getting a secret rare that you actually want. As for the ultra rares, there are 50 ultra rares within the 2020 mega tins. That's a lot. And when you consider the fact that there's only two per pack, which means you're going to get six total in a single tin, that means you're looking at about just slightly over a one in eight chance of getting a particular ultra rare. And then when you get to the super rares, the odds get a little bit better. There's 27 super rares. And so again, you're getting two super rares per pack times three packs is six. So you have about a one in six chance, just a little bit over that of getting any particular super rare. Now, I want to take some time and discuss some of these specific cards in the Megatons because this is what people truly look forward to every single year. The Megatons are the opportunity for Konami to reprint a lot of some of the game's most expensive cards to make them readily accessible for a much wider audience. And starting with the Secret Rare slot, there's already a ton to be excited for. We've got Secret Rare cards in here like Borload Savage Dragon. This card was like an $80 card before the reprint got announced. And while it's still probably going to be pretty expensive, this is a very very desperate reprint that a lot of people are going to be happy to see. Pot of Extravagance is another one. Now, Pot of Extravagance has already received a reprint from Toon Chaos, but it's still a very expensive card sitting at about $40 a copy. So having another reprint in these mega tins are going to drop the value of that card significantly. We also have a card like IP Mascarena. This is one of the best Link 2 monsters in the game, being able to interact with your opponent on their turn and was hitting about a $30 to $40 price tag for an ultra rare. So not only is it going to be reprinted, printed, but it's getting a rarity upgrade to secret along with Borrowload Savage Dragon. So that way you not only get another way to get it, but it's at a higher rarity as well. Now I was looking at those few cards purely from a financial reprint perspective, but there's tons of cards in here that get rarity upgraded. And this is something they've started doing recently with the mega tins that I really like because it gives people an incentive to want to get this product, even if they already have these cards, because now they're going to be printed at a much higher and much shinier rarity. I'm talking about cards like Gar Dragon, LP, and Pisty. I'm talking about World Legacy Gar Dragon, Dragoon in the Night Romulus, Striker Dragon in here as well, Gallant Granite, Neos Fusion, Time Thief Redoer, Crackdown, hell, there's even Mystic Mine. All of the cards that I just mentioned get a Prismatic Secret Rare upgrade. So even for the Mystic Mine players, there is something coveted within these tins. And I think this is fantastic. A lot of these cards already see a reasonable amount of play already, depending on what deck you like to play. And so giving people not only more access to these these cards, especially for the competitive level, but also making it that they're higher rarity so that people are going to want to foil out their decks just for that extra bling. It's a win-win all around. But now let's move on to the ultra rares. There are some great ultra rare reprints in this set as well. I'm talking cards like Mech Knight Crusadia Avramax. We've got cards like Gizmek Orochi. We've got Cherubini and even Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. This is a card that reached like $80 to $90, maybe even beyond that at one point. So this card is now going to be widely accessible for 
players who would want to play any sort of combo deck. But I think this is where the issues start to come up with these Mega Tins because there's 50 ultra rare slots. Those four cards I just named are really the highlights of the ultra rare category. And a lot of this section is clogged with cards out of infinity chasers like the evil eye cards, the witchcrafter cards, the infinite track cards. And if you're looking after those cards, I mean, that's wonderful, but these cards aren't really too hard to acquire anyway. I think the most expensive card out of infinity chasers is like $10 and everything else is like maybe a couple bucks at most. So these cards don't necessarily need any sort of reprint right now. And so it's diluting the ability for you to get some of these more high value reprints. And when you start to look at the common cards, it makes me question why they decided to pick which cards that they did for the foil printings, because they could have picked cards like Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf, Medulce Petting Sessor, Kida Fire Charmer Ablaze, which I think is the only charmer now to not receive anything above a super reprint. And that's solely due to the fact that it was printed in a set before Starlight Rares existed. You even got stuff like Extra Hero Cross Crusader for hero players. There's just a handful of cards that I feel like could have been in the super ultra or maybe even secret slot to kind of give some of these players of these other decks a little bit more incentive to want to get this product and kind of dial it back when it comes to some of these infinity chaser cards. But now we're going to get to my biggest frustration when it comes to these mega tins, and that is the promo cards, or in this case, the lack thereof. Now, what I mean by that is historically, usually these tins come with the promo in addition to the three mega packs that you get in the tin, but this time, Konami decided, hey, why would we just give them the card when we can just incorporate it into the mega packs themselves and make it even more difficult for them to obtain some of these cards? I definitely do not think this is going in the right direction whatsoever, because especially when some of these cards are game breaking, which we'll get to in a moment, this is where I really have an issue. Imagine in the 2019 mega tins if Nibiru, Dark Ruler No More, and Dimension Shifter were just bundled in with the rest of the mega pack cards and weren't guaranteed one of three in every single tin. I think the prices of some of these cards would have been triple, if not quadruple the price that they were at release. And so that brings me to the first issue here is that these promos are nothing like Nibiru. These promos are nothing like Dark Ruler No More. Hell, they're nothing like Dimension Shifter because we have to go back to the nostalgia bait that is Dark Magician and Blue Eyes White Dragon. So let's talk about the first promo being Successor Soul. It is a quick play spell that reads tribute one effect monster, then target one effect monster your opponent controls, send it to the graveyard, then special summon one level seven or higher normal monster from your hand or deck. You can only activate one successor soul per turn. You can only attack with one monster during the turn you activate this card. Strength and unity is the second promo card, which is a continuous spell that reads if you ritual or fusion summon using blue eyes, white dragon or dark magician, you can target one card your opponent controls or in their graveyard yard banish it. You can send this face up card from the field to the graveyard, then target one level seven or higher normal monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand or shuffle it into the deck. You can only use each effect of strength and unity once per turn. Then finally, Destined Rivals is the third promo, which is a normal trap that reads, if you control blue eyes, white dragon or dark magician, negate the effects of all face up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. You can only activate one Destined Rivals per turn. The issue that I take with this is that what I loved so much about the 2019 mega tins is that especially when they included the promos it really emphasized the point that the cards in the tins are really for pretty much the widest possible audience imaginable when you got one of those tins or you wanted to get those specific promos those promos are so widely applicable to so many universal strategies because they pretty much helped deter combo decks more specifically talking about nibiru and dark ruler no more here because dimension shifter is a bit more of a fringe case but even dimension shifter has seen fringe amounts of play and actually is a reasonable card in some decks on top of that. And that's just the least popular of the bunch. I was really excited with the 2020 Megatons thinking that we were going to get three more world premiere cards that were going to be on the power level of something like Nibiru or Dark Ruler no more generic cards that numerous strategies can play and take advantage of. And it's really going to be a set of cards that all players are going to enjoy. But then Konami announced these promos and it was just so 
disappointing seeing these cards because yes, we know Red Eyes Dark Dragoon is in this product. Yes, this is the universally applicable card that can go in numerous different strategies, but I wanted to see more. I wanted to see more of those widely applicable generic cards. Maybe they gave us some world premiere cards to maybe help us combat Dragoon or combat some other strategies to give players a good boost and really introduce a lot of hype and excitement. But as soon as they released that these were the promos, everyone got immediately disenchanted. And then if that weren't enough, what really just frustrates me about the whole process is that they then not only gave us these lackluster promos, again, apart from Dragoon, but they incorporated them into the mega packs themselves. So Dragoon is already one of the most hyped cards of 2020, and yet it's not even going to be a guaranteed one in four chance of getting it. It's now bundled in with the one in eight chance of getting a particular ultra rare in a specific tin. So uh, not accounting for any sort of short printing, which we also know Konami is notorious for, then the likelihood of getting Dragoon is even more rare and more obscure, and it just makes the whole product seem that much more unappealing. So overall, the Megaton does a lot of things right. It provides a place for players to get reprints of high value cards and even rarity bumps a lot of cards that are already seeing tons of play, but now are at a higher rarity so that really whether you're a casual player, competitive player, or even a collector in some instances, you're going to be really happy with what this product has to offer. But I think these tins are definitely a step backwards from the 2019 tins. And the reason I say that is because they decided to bundle the promos within the mega packs to make it that much more unlikely likely that you'll actually get them. The fact that the promos are very lackluster and only appeal to a very small subset of the overall player base. The fact that one of those promos, which is a game warping card, competitively speaking, is going to be that much more difficult to obtain when it could have been a one in four chance, but now has basically been artificially pushed up to a one in eight chance, not even accounting for short printing. And we don't even know if that's taking place. And that's just assuming all averages are going through perfectly. And the fact that the product is being kind of bulked down with some of these other side sets just to give these products a bit of a reprint. And I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. These tins in the past used to just be the last four core sets. And now they've started to bundle in a fifth one, which kind of just makes all these numbers larger and makes it harder for you to really get the cards that you want. This is the reason why I always tell you guys to buy the singles, because when you look at the math and look at how much you would actually be spending to try to get some of these cards that you're actually going to want, because not everyone wants the same thing or wants everything out of their tin. This way, you're going to get exactly what you want every single time, and you don't have to gamble with it, hoping that you will. But if you guys do end up purchasing any singles or sealed tins, or really anything for that matter, be sure to use my TCG Player affiliate link down in the description because it doesn't cost you anything, and it helps directly support the channel. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the 2020 Mega Tins. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and if you found this video informative, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.